Hello, I'm John Bachman. Federal investigators right now are trying to determine if three Colorado teens were trying to join ISIS. The three girls, two sisters of Somali descent and one from a Sudanese family, apparently stole $2,000 and took off last week from the Denver area. They were stopped in Germany, apparently on their way to Syria, and have been now taken back home. The FBI is trying to figure out if those girls know anyone else who may have been trying to do the same thing. And as the fighting continues in and around the Syrian city of Kobani, there are still questions about those supplies intended for Kurdish defenders of that town, airdropped by American planes. ISIS says it captured some of them. The Pentagon says it delivered more than two dozen bundles and destroyed the one that went off target. Let's just for argument's sake, and only argument's sake, say that this, bun this bundle uh, ended up in the hands of ISIL. It's one out of 28. So I think that's a pretty good record of success from the air. Well, ISIS posted a video apparently showing the supplies it had captured, complete with a sarcastic thank you. But officials say it looks like that may have been conveniently edited. Due in court today, the Indiana man who's confessed to killing seven women right now, 43-year-old Darren Van, is charged with just one of those murders. More charges are expected, though. The bodies of the other women were found in abandoned buildings around Gary, Indiana, and police say they're now scouring other vacant buildings. Our number one priority is public safety. Uh, we went through approximately about 120 structures today uh, just to make sure that there was no one in the vehicle, any uh, structures and to make sure that they can be boarded up swiftly. Van does have a history of violence. A decade ago, he doused a woman with gasoline and threatened to set her on fire. And in 2009, he was convicted of rape in Texas. And it's time again for the Waste Book. Retiring Oklahoma Senator Tom Cover is out with an annual look at what he calls the top 100 wasteful federal projects like zombie musicals or voodoo dolls. Coburn says if you add it all up, it totals about $25 billion in wasteful spending. Yes, those were real projects. And Florida Governor Rick Scott and challenger Charlie Chris got personal during their last debate, especially when the minimum wage issue came up. CNN's Jake Tapper asked Chris about a small business owner who said she'd have to lay off an employee if the minimum wage did in fact go up as Democrats want. All right, well, we apparently don't have it. We'll try to get that to you coming up in a uh, later update. Uh, of course, this race is now at a dead heat. Governor Scott has the lead among uh, men. Chris has the lead among, among women, and that works out to a flat-footed tie with less than two weeks to go until Election Day. And one of the three Americans held in North Korea is now back home. Jeffrey Fowle reunited with his family in Ohio a few hours ago. He had been arrested after leaving a Bible at a North Korean hotel. Christian evangelism is a crime in North Korea. And the Washington Post editor who guided the paper through Watergate is now dead. Ben Bradley helped transform the Post from a sleepy paper to the nation's, in the nation's capital to the leading newspaper in the country. He was 93 years old.